I guess to me, innovation means finding ways to improve our product that ultimately makes the ability of our customers to complete their task the most efficient way. What well, really started off on M-Series, M M1, M2, R2, Easy Move Transport. Well past my best before date. I'm 69. Designing is what I like to do. I first started with MacDon in 1990, after 13 years of farming. As a test technician, actually I've worked on every product, which has been good. Grew up on a farm, so I had that farm background. I worked on auger headers, uh, multi-crop headers at the time, and the pull-type uh, swing tongues, the 5000. Uh, we were often, as a design team, encouraged to uh, try stuff that had very little chance of working. And you learn something from that. It was a, a big factor uh, in getting Mac on to where it was. Our engineering team spends a lot of time in the field. I think another factor that got us where we are is listening to and working with our customers. As you might see in the field, you'll talk about it over dinner, you'll brainstorm, and then you might go to Home Depot and buy stuff to try it. It's one thing to sit behind a computer and, and put stuff together, and it's another thing to get your hands dirty and try to do it on a real piece of iron. Every bean you leave in the field is profit. You look at how much you end up with in the bin, and if you can see that your, your change helped improve it, even if it's just a few percentage points, right? That's a significant impact. We were looking at different crops, and we did a really good job, but as the hitters got longer, um, if you had a long wing, there'd be little points where you might have um, a little valley in that where your, your bridged wing might not get it. So we thought there was an opportunity there if we could do it right and do it mechanically, and that's kind of what sprung the idea for the FD2+. Plus. Like one of the challenges we had is because we want to complement the current hinge draper with our float system and maintain that close uh, reel to cutter bar clearance, literally just floating the cutter bar. That's one of the reasons why we limited our float to only two inches. That's what all the cutter bar moves is two inches. But if you get too much beyond that, you can't set the reel low enough to get short crops. You just miss it and it just bunches up on the cutter bar. Well, that's a big debate, was we're not gonna go as far as the competitors because we need to maintain our credibility with the reel to a cut of our relationship. And initially it's like you look at it and you're like plus or minus an inch, you're like that's not gonna make any difference. But then when you're in a field and you actually see it, it's quite impressive because you can, a field like lentils where the crop is really low to the ground, like it's very clear where the flexible cutter bar FD2 Plus was compared to if it was just rigid. The design and then through testing, we actually found a side effect of that was that it wasn't just going down and getting an extra crop, it was that we floated over stones and other things like that too, where you might be pushing or you might break a section, we just floated right over top of it. Because it's very simple, very light, it just uses basically leaf springs. One of the first things I learned when I came to Macdon was try to do it simple. Simple is a lot harder to design than complex. In terms of the flexible cutter bar, it's about as simple as we thought we could do that. Sometimes I feel there's two ways. You can either add a lot of sensors and just get automation that way, create the world's smartest header, or you can design it in a way where potentially you don't need to change anything and then it's almost like passive automation where you just have one setting and it works really well. Cars get more complicated every day or everything gets more complicated every day and down the road when this machine is in the third or fourth owner's hands, you know, how are you going to fix this thing? How are you going to keep it running? And, and that's the advantage of the simple. We wanted to maintain a mechanical system and these springs are compact. They don't take a whole lot of room, but they're proper material and the proper profile you can uh, Design it to give you that amount of flex you want and maintain that neutral position, which is very important. We had a bin full of broken springs in the test shed um, with different materials that we tried. We had a machine set up to flex the springs like uh, buzzing for weeks, like it would do millions of cycles. When you have to pick a material, you need to be able to have a material that will perform, but you need to have a material that will live the length of the machine. I think that's what makes it really elegant, like it solves a problem while, without adding a, a lot of complexity and weight to the machine. We had an old, it must have been an FD1 prototype not being used, where we cut the cutter bar off, put in the new cutter bar, shipped it to the field. We took it to Kentucky. We had a giant crate full of multiple different designs and we changed out the entire cutter bar multiple times throughout the first day of testing. So the definitive moment I always have was in um, Strathclair, Manitoba. 
with David Watson was the test uh, engineer there. We went up there and we measured thousands of stems in a little square to basically do statistical analysis of our current two series header compared to an FD2+. So when you do that, you'll typically get a bell curve, your typical distribution. So we did that on the FD2, it looked great. It was um, short stems evenly distributed. And then we did it with FD2 plus and it basically proved our premise that we'd cut shorter more consistently because the bell curve had a shorter peak and it was tighter. So from there we had the proof. And just, just that extra inch being able to go down was able to capture it all. So that was, I thought that was really rewarding to see, right? Like you, that's crop that's in the bin and not on the ground. Ran it with a number of farmers and and we got lots of lots of good comments, especially from uh, some soybean growers that had particular conditions and and the lentil growers. Any crops where the seed is so low to the ground, you know, you just get that little bit extra. Uh, I think that's probably the most rewarding for me, specifically when you can actually quantify it. You make a change, and then you you see like you know we're we're saving X amount in this field, and quickly you can do a bit of math and realize, hey, this now means we can feed an extra 10,000 people. Like, I think that's really rewarding.